what is going on guys it's Igor here and I am here to bring you the Salem content update patch for February 21st 2013 so first of all a couple of announcements like I usually do I do apologize for the lack of videos lately my computer is having a few issues the my fraps just does not want to record with audio and it doesn't want to let me do basically two things at once so I'm having a few computer issues and I've tried messing with stuff and experimenting so basically what I've done is I've recorded the audio first and I've recorded the gameplay over this so it might not match up totally good but nonetheless hopefully you guys still enjoy it starting right off at the very beginning of this update and you can see it on the forum it is called game development in the shadow of pixels the game now runs on JOGL2 and as Yorb would say himself, not the shadow of Pixel's worth of difference was noticed, but there was much rejoicing nevertheless. So it probably means more to them than it does to us. If you know what JOGL2 is, post it in the comment section down below and how it how it has anything to do with Salem, I would like to know myself. So if you do know, post it in the comment section and you know I'll make sure I respond to that. Now starting off with the update itself, civilizational drain on humors heavily increased. And the second part of it is civilized areas increased in size due to new civilization algorithm. So I'm assuming, now this is all assumption, and I've kind of read it, it's still kind of confusing. I'm assuming they've made the darkness smaller, so the actual, you can go out farther before you hit the darkness, but on the downside, the drain is higher, you know, for the darkness. So uh, yeah, I mean, experiment with that, try it out. You know, see how far, you know, if you lived near the darkness before and you knew where it was, try and go that same direction and see if it's any farther out. It is no longer possible for stand owners to withdraw items from a market stand at no cost. The reason I think they did this was because some players were using market stands as, well, more or less, they were using it as a bank where they could store their items set to cost at a ridiculously high price so that no one would buy it and they could withdraw and put in items at their leisure and I'm pretty sure that wasn't an exact game mechanic. So they've cut that out. You actually have to pay silver now to take items out that you put in. The market stand owners are now forced to set a price before putting goods in a stand slot. I'm assuming, I like I said, I don't own a stand, so I'm not sure exactly how this works, but I'm assuming that you actually have to set a price to on, your, on that set item before you can put it in the slot, therefore, so that you cannot... I guess so you cannot mess with the prices too much. You can't set it ridiculously high and then real low one minute. And which brings me to the next one. The price of goods in a stand is now only, it can only be adjusted within the span of, of plus or minus 50% of the originally set price. They did this solely because of inflation. If somebody is, inflation and competition really. If somebody is selling something, you know, for far cheaper, you can adjust your price to beat them and it just kind of the cycle repeats. The stands can now sell batches of items as well, so I'm assuming, once again, that you can buy, you know, 10 of something instead of one at a time, and it makes things a little bit quicker, and the weekly rent of stands has been increased to 1,000 silver, which is why I can't afford it. I do not have enough time to play to afford 1,000 silver a week. To, to rent a stand, so I, I I can't do that, which is why I don't know a whole lot about the market stands and, and how they work. I'm just telling you guys so that if you run a market stand, experiment with it and try it out, you know, now you know. You can no longer teleport home with mounts, and no horses are not in the game yet. It, they are meaning chairs, boats, etc., etc., which I didn't even know you could do that. So, cool. Thanks, guys, for fixing that. That seems like kind of a bug. And for all of you who have kind of kept up on bugs, you know, speaking of bugs and, and hacks and whatever you wish to call them, fields built in strange places cannot be built the same. They can no longer be built that way and have been destroyed. So what I'm talking about is the one by one fields. If you know what the one by one fields are, basically um, somebody made a custom client that I'm assuming could put 50 fields on one tile of terrain so you could have you know 50 fields within a very small area and manage them efficiently and that's not really the mechanic or it's not really what the game intended so thanks guys for fixing that because in my opinion if you're doing something that that the game is not intended to do even if it's in beta it's still considered cheating and expected to be fixed you can't break a game and and 
you know, oh, it's part of the game. In my opinion, no. If, you, if, you're, if you're doing something that the game is not intended to do or it's not a mechanic of the game, it's still considered cheating. Claim stones can be destroyed during a five minute window after each homestead spawned by it. So if you summon your, your friend to your land, there's a five minute window in which they can turn around, backstab you, destroy your claim stone, and you're screwed. They can kill you, not leave sense, stuff like that. Be careful who you invite to your land. You know, make sure it's a friend, make sure you've been talking to them for a while. Don't just invite random people because they will spawn near your claim stone, most likely, and there's a five minute window which they can destroy it. So don't don't just invite everybody to your land. Make sure you're careful who you let in and who you summon to you. There is now a one minute cooldown also on claim stones after each homestead spawned by it before the stone can again be used to spawn a new character. This more so applies to raiding in my opinion. I think they did this so that if you're being raided, you can't just spawn 500 alt characters and block them off or whatever. So it actually there's a one minute cooldown before you can spawn somebody else. Not really a big deal if you're a casual player, if you're a hermit, or even if you're in a village. One minute is not a long time at all, considering I'm sure all of you Salemers out there have wasted away four hours in Salem and went, hey, where'd the time go? One minute is seconds. Collapsing walls no longer deal splash damage to walls tougher than themselves. What this basically means is that if you make a makeshift fence and you have a stone wall behind it, if somebody comes up and destroys the makeshift fence, it will do no damage to the stone wall behind it. Now, in one of the recent updates, it might have been the last one, They, in case, once again, that you didn't see it. If you did not see it, they made walls give splash damage when you dis destroy them, and what people started realizing is that you could build a makeshift fence on the outside of your land. If somebody comes up and destroys the makeshift fence, it does massive damage to your stone walls behind it. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when the makeshift fence is that cheap. So they fixed that. They made it so it doesn't affect the you know, stronger walls behind them. But wall splash damage now traverses weaker walls. So the if you kill a stone wall and there's a makeshift fence behind it, it will do damage to the makeshift fence. Obviously, of course, once again, that makes sense. Next part of the update is that you can only see waste claims if you're in a village. You can only see waste claims before somebody raids you and they show up in the actions menu if you have the appropriate skills. So you actually need the skill to see the waste claim. In my opinion, once again, it makes sense. I'm kind of still on the fence about it. You know, maybe if there's a new player and he's the only one online and he's just this innocent little guy, which I know Salem is not about innocence and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. It does make sense, but might be a little harsh. I don't know. What do you guys think? And last part on that paragraph or that section is that minimap player indicators rendered more opaquely so as so as to be easier to be read. Now I'm assuming this is the waxing toadstools, the stray chestnuts, all the stuff on the ground that you can see on your minimap now are a little bit more opaque, they're a little bit more see-through so that you can see them and read them a little bit easier. I don't know, I don't use the default client, I just it gives me a headache, I'm sorry. So I don't really know, so you guys experiment with it, let me know what you think. Woven baskets can now be repaired with tinder, so you can actually repair a woven basket with the wood choppings or whatever you can find with tinder. So you can use those to repair them now, so it's a little bit easier for new players. The Windborne Kite and Dream Catchers can now be hung on walls. So in case you didn't see my last video about decorating your home, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, go watch that, it's really cool. You can actually decorate your homes now with axes and swords and posters, or not posters, pictures and wallpapers, and you can customize your own wallpapers and all that good stuff. So check that out. It's a uh, last video I did. And... The hunting trophy now requires fewer boards, so that's a little bit cheaper, and cheaper inspirationals are always good because, well, let's face it, you need tons of them. Now, if you had mechanics and locksmithing, and you log back into the game, and you're wondering where mechanics went, you actually need to, you need to unlock and buy locksmithing before you unlock mechanics. They made it a prerequisite for mechanics is to have locksmithing. They lowered the cost of locksmithing to 2,000 hammer and nail instead of 2,500, but they raised the cost of mechanics to 2,500 hammer and nail instead of 2,000. So honestly, you might as well just go ahead and get 2,500 or 2,500 hammer and nail anyway because, well, you need it to get mechanics. So you might as well just go ahead and get the extra 500 points there. Now, uh, the last part, which is the best part and coolest part, is expect more meaningful content in the wilderness next week. Yay! 
finally stuff going on out in the darkness they're changing some stuff and doing that so that's what i was talking about in the beginning civilizational drain on humors the civilized areas are now larger it's all doing heavy stuff to do with the darkness so i'm assuming they're going to be putting some stuff in there maybe some items maybe some more creatures who knows we will wait and see i'm sure i will bring you the video for it as soon as possible so that you guys can go out and play with it yourselves and that's really all there is to this update. Not a whole lot of super exciting stuff, but mainly just this update was more so fixing stuff and making things a little bit more polished and so on and so forth. So once again, if you if you like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, that'd be great. I post updates and stuff like that so you guys can see what's going on. And as always, thanks for watching.